Alright, hey guys, and welcome to another Blender tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about the video sequence editor and how to add image sequence um, sequences to the video sequence editor and then render out as video files and just how to mess around with the uh, video sequence editor in general. I'll probably cover this in more than one tutorial, but this is the starting point for our BSC tutorial. So, before we actually start the tutorial, we're going to have to create an image sequence. Now, an image sequence is somewhat similar to a video, except it's pretty much just a bunch of images, uh, image sequence. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and make a quick image sequence, and I'll show you guys the process, and then I'll pause and, uh, for the rendering, and then when it's done, I'll come back to you guys. So, um, I'm just going to go ahead and make this plane here, and, um, and just scale it up. Then I'm going to add a cube. Focus up here, and we're going to insert a keyframe for its uh, location over here, I think. I insert location. I'm going to go to 250. Um, from there, and then we're going to move the cube over here, put another I for location. And so now when we play back the animation, it very, very slowly goes across to the screen. That's what we want. We're going to add a camera. We're going to move it over here, and then we're going to do a little bit of rotation up a little bit, rotate X. Um, this is just a really simple scene setup. It can be done with any image sequence, but I'm just going to go through this to show you guys what my image sequence looks like beforehand in the 3D view and then what it'll look like afterwards. And now while I'm uh, working on this scene, I can tell you guys um, why it's helpful to render out as image sequences and not as video. So with rendering out as video, um, the thing with rendering out as video is that when you start a render of a video, you have to get to the end, all the way to the end of the, uh, the render in order for the video to be complete. If your render, like your computer, your power goes out and your computer shuts down during the render, you cannot resume that render. You have to restart the entire animation simply because that's just the way um, video works and it's the more of the file thing that's a problem. But with image sequence, if your computer shuts down midway through an image, it's okay because you've saved all of your frames as individual images and you can go back to where that last frame was and you can start up your Im image, your render again. That also is good because you can choose different types of compression and you can actually compress your file more beforehand and then you don't lose as much quality in your final video product. So here I have my basic scene set up. I'm going to go ahead and add a lamp here, uh, just add a spot lamp. And uh, this is not going to be a, you know, an award winning animation, but it's just a little something to uh, to to just show you all in a demo this kind of uh, this really really cool um, technique I guess of rendering. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and render this image sequence, and uh, I'll be back when it's done. All right, guys. So I just finished that render. It's not exactly you know like I said a prize winning render or anything. It's really crappy. I'm not gonna include a download for it because it's a fairly simple render that shouldn't take very long on your system, and you can follow along or you can follow along with a different render. It doesn't matter what. So now that we've finished our render, we're going to go to the Video Sequence Editor, or VSE, as you'll often hear it referred to as. So, <laughs> a little bit of jumble words there. So now I'm going to switch over in the Video Sequence Editor. At first, you'll see this view right here that I just opened up. And what I'm going to do is switch over to the uh, preview in both. So I get the preview of whatever's in my Video Sequence Editor up here and my actual strips, which is what they're called, which is basically sections of footage or sound or other effects um, that you can apply with Sequencer because you can do a whole slew of things. But they'll appear in the bottom half right here. Um, and uh, if we you know, scrub right now, which uh, if you don't know what scrubbing is, scrubbing is going back and forth with the uh, uh, basically over all of your clips and uh, media in, in this video sequence editor or in anything really. Um, and uh, you can see right now it's just black because there's nothing in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to Shift A and we're going to add an image. Now, this is also what I was talking about earlier because you say, oh, yeah, Caleb, I hear you on um, rendering out images, but I'm still going to have to render it out as a video at some point. Yes, but rendering out as a video from the frames is very, very quick because you already have the frames, so all you have to do is make the file of the video. And if you don't understand what I'm talking about, I think you will in a second. So I uh, just went into my folder where I had the output of our, of our file, of our rendered file that we we're going to test out with. And you'll see it's like this. Make sure it's organized A to Z so that the lowest number comes first and the highest number is last. This is important because if you organize it by date or um, by basically the opposite way of A to Z, so 250 would be at the front, 
then the sequence editor will actually play your image or your frames backwards. So now that I have this one um, like this with A to Z, zero uh, or O one being the first frame here, I'm going to simply hit A. Or if you don't want to select all of them, you can also press B and then only select a few of them. If you select um, down here, you can also just select a whole column. But if you select a column, you have to be careful that you stay within the column here. Or if I don't, you see I get these two columns. So I'm just going to press A because I want all of these. And I'm going to click Add Image Strip. And you'll see here it's put this big purple thing here. And if we drag this so that the first frame, the lower number up here, is to 1 or 0, I guess. Hold on, I'm on 0, frame 0. Um, let's grab this over 1 right there. So now you'll see we have our frame here. And if we scrub, you can see the cube moves across like that. And if I press Alt-A, um, now with, this is a fairly small image um, size. If you do it in full HD, your computer might go a little slow. Um, it might be a little laggy the first time over. Or it might be a little laggy the entire time. If you're getting a lot of lag, it's for one of two reasons. One, your system is not the highest it could be and it's running a little laggy because it's trying to load all those HD images up and it's hard on the system. If your system's being laggy the first time and then not laggy the second time or less laggy the second time, here's what you may need to do. Go to user preferences, system, scroll down here, and you'll see memory cache limit. You want to turn this up as high as possible. That way when you play the animation the first time it'll be laggy, but after that it's loaded all of these images into your RAM and accesses them instantly. So it gets rid of all the lag after the first run through. But you might want to, you know, if it's a really big HD file, you might want to just press Alt-A and, you know, go get a cup of coffee and let it run through once or twice just to get it all cached because sometimes it can take a, a little bit, especially with larger projects. But this one's a very low sequence and I have a fairly good system, so it's all fast. So you'll see we have this here. And uh, if, we, if we played it, that would be great. But let's say we wanted to add some audio um, or we had some audio in the scene that we pulled out with speakers and now we have that audio file somewhere easy. All you have to do is press Shift A and add a sound here. And then uh, I'm just going to go to my downloads and I guess just find the uh, first thing that pops up. So I guess uh, let's go with swoosh. This is just a sound effect file. Um, I think if we play it here, you should be able to hear it. Maybe not. Yeah, so I don't know if you could hear that, but there's a little swoosh um, <laughs> like that if you couldn't hear it. <laughs> it's weird noise. But um. Yeah, I'm just going to put it in right here, and so um, if we were to play it, let's see, no sound, no sound, sound right there. So um, if you press in, and you, um, if you're wondering like where the sound is exactly, you can also press draw waveform over here with the sound selected, and you'll be able to see the actual waveform of the sound, so you can, you can scrub here. Now if you're playing, if you're pressing Alt-A and you're not hearing any sound, here's why. I have mine set up like this, but default Blender is not. If you go down to um, playback, in the timeline and you and you select audio scrubbing that way I can go back and forth and um, yeah you can hear the sound playing there um, these other things if your system is particularly slow you might not want to have audio scrubbing but you might want AV sync and frame dropping as if it's a super HD file and the frames can't keep up with the sound because sound takes priority over frames when it's playing in blender you, um, it will basically just start dropping frames, so not all the frames will be. So the animation itself will look a little jumpy, but the sound will play perfectly in time with the frames. Um, so now that we have this, um, you're saying, oh, well, we need to still render out our um, video um, file, and that's what we're getting to next. So you want to keep them at the, uh, the resolution of the render at the same um, resolution that you rendered this out as. I rendered this out as half of HD. So I'm going to keep it like that, but you may need to change yours based on what it is and make sure that it's 100 for whatever you're doing. But this is what I had set, so I don't need to worry about it. Your frames per second is also something you want to keep the frames per second consistent with what you rendered out. By default, Blender has 24 frames, so most of your animation will be done in 24 unless you change it ahead of time. So if we go down to Output and select, select instead of a PNG or JPEG or any of these, we select MPEG. On Max, you can select QuickTime, although QuickTime the codecs for it in Blender are a little buggy and can often lead to crashes. And so I also suggest that before you attempt a sequence render, it's best to save your work. Because if you don't save your work, you'll very likely end up with a crash. Um, I'm not going to because I don't really need this particular file for anything. So, But I would always recommend saving before you try and do any renders, whether regardless of whether that be the image renders or the actual final video renders. Because it, Blender is still buggy. It is an open source program. It's not perfect. So it's best to be careful. Um, so now we're going to down here and 
Um, I'm going to show you guys the fastest upload settings for YouTube, or at least the fastest upload settings that I know for YouTube. Um, there are more HD settings, but these are the best for streaming on the internet, regardless of whether it be for Vimeo, YouTube, Flickr, for any kind of uh, media sharing site. So you select MPEG-4 in the format, and then um, if you have audio, which I do, um, I'm going to change the audio codec to AAC. And um, usually you want the bitrate at the highest, which is 320. That's the HD bitrate of, uh, of a sound file. So you want to put that there. These I don't honestly know much about. I've done a little bit of research on them. And from what I can tell, the default settings work really well. Um, you might um, know more than I do. I, I simply know this stuff. But if you know more, then feel free to comment on it. Or you, you know uh, what kind of custom settings you are. And each site... Um, online that upload that has upload videos sometimes they do give you specifications for what it is and if they do give you those it's best to uh, you know follow those specifications and blender does allow you to get really specific so now that we have this here and i have mpeg4 i'm going to render out to the same folder that all my image sequences are in um, and before i render that um, animation out and you'll see how quick it is i'm going to also add an effect strip to show you what kind of effects you can achieve with the dse and give you a kind of a taste to what our next tutorial about the DSE will be, which will be coming out, I think, a week or two after this one comes out. So if we press Shift A and we have Effects Strip, you can see all of these, um, these really cool effect layers. And I'm not going to get into all of them right now, but if we look at them, um, you can see Adjustment Layer. And I think that's the one I want, is it? Um, let's see. Nope, that's not the one I want at all. Hold on one second. All right, and hey guys, we're back. Sorry, I had to... Uh, Something uh, stopped working on Windows, I think. Uh, something crashed. I think it may have been I was trying to upload two YouTube videos at the same time. And uh, if you've ever thought about doing it, don't do it. Uh, not worth it. Yeah, it crashed. But uh, I'm back and uh, figured out what I had forgotten. I momentarily had a lapse there, but I remember what I was doing. Um, so I'm going to show you all just one effect you can get with the video sequence editor. And to do this, I'm going to need a second strip. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press Shift A, going to add another image. And this time I'm going to organize it by date so I get the reverse of the uh, current animation I have. I'm going to add all of them. Then we're going to move it back down here. And now if we play it, you'll see it goes the opposite direction of what we originally had. And it plays that little swish noise. So. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to have both of these selected. I'm going to press Shift A, Effects Strip, and I'm going to just choose White here. And now you can see that uh, I'm going to press Alt A again. And we see the first animation come in here, and then halfway through, right as that swish comes in, we see it wipe the other one. And uh, it's kind of a stupid effect. It looks stupid because it's not a perfect render, but um, it works. Yeah, we can see it happening again. Um, I think you can also add glow to this. Um, this is another example. So I think now if we play it, um, let's see here if it worked. Yeah, it's taking a little bit longer than normal because I think it's calculating all that glow. Let's see. Uh, did it work? Mm, looks like it didn't work. I think it's just because my glow settings are low and there's no bright lights in here to have a glow on. But now we have our uh, basic animation here that does a little switchy thing. So with that, we're going to make sure that that output's the same. We have all of our output here. And uh, we're going to hit Render Animation. And you'll watch. See, this thing flies. I mean, we're getting 0.3 milliseconds per frame at, at most. Um, and it's really consistent. Look at how fast it plays out. It's just a little bit slower than real time. And we're done. Just like that. And so now I think if I open it uh, up, let's see, go to our videos. It'll take a little bit to load. I got a lot of videos in here and it's getting more and more clogged. I need to clean it out, but I never have time. So I think now we can play it. Um, take a second to load up, but uh, nope, there's a little bit of lag there. Yep, you can see our animation plays. And it got the sound there as well 320 kilobytes per second, which is exactly what we had to set at. And uh, yep, it wipes like that and it's done. So yeah. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you learned some stuff from this VSE tutorial, and I'll uh, be sure to have some more coming along the way. Um, also, I think by now I'll have already started it by the time you all see this tutorial, but if I haven't, um, I'll be starting the week this tutorial goes up. So, um, uh, as Mondays as well as Fridays, I'm going to have uploads. I usually just upload on Mondays. I'm going to upload on Mondays and Fridays now. Uh, they're not going to be Blender tutorials on Friday. Usually I think they're going to be 
talking about CG stuff, but it'll still be very interesting. And even if you're not a Blender user or if you are a Blender user, you should still watch them because they're, I think, fairly informative videos. All right, well, that's it, guys. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Uh, leave a comment or a rating, like, whatever, um, favorite, subscribe if you want to. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Thanks so much.